we can learn two different lessons from this question. One about verb agreement and the other one about rhetorical construction. Let's read the condensed version of the text. The 32 species that make up the dolphin family are closely related to whales and include the animal known as the killer whale which can grow to be 30 feet long and is famous for its aggressive hunting pods. Now, to me, that doesn't sound too bad, but what I do when that happens is I look at the differences between option A, the original, and B, C, D, and E. And I notice two main differences. See if you can spot them. The first difference would be, is it include or includes? Hmm, we're not sure. Is it include or includes? Ask yourself, who or what includes the animal known as a killer whale? Or who or what include the animal known as a killer whale? It's the 32 species includes the animal known as a killer whale. So the 32 species is plural. So then we make our mind up. Is it include or includes? 32 species is plural. So we go for the singular verb, include. So the 32 species include the animal known as the killer whale. Tommy's friends include John. You wouldn't say Tommy include John or something like that. So when we have a plural subject of the sentence, we need a singular verb. Okay, now we've got the verbs to agree. We know it's not D or E, so we're down to a, B, or C. Can you spot any other differences? Well, after the comma here, the original answer has which, whereas B and C have growing as big as or growing up to. Which one of those three makes it very clear we're talking about the killer whale growing up to 30 feet long? It would be A. So whenever you see a comma and then a which, that's always referring to the noun just before the comma. So we know it's exactly talking about the killer whale which can grow up to 30 feet long. If you look at B and C, growing as big as or growing up to, we, we assume it's the killer whale, but it might be the dolphin family, it might be the 32 species, it's not quite clear what we're referring to. And remember, the GMAT correct answer will always be incredibly clear what we're referring to at all times. That knocks out B and C, leaving A as the correct answer.